high. A future retrospect. As if it is now 2050. The earth is a cooperative place. What was it that made the difference? Our setting is a living room, my living room. I am an author, a speaker, a harper, and an OG's vision holder. The occasion is children from the OG's headquarters in Kamloops come to hear their question answered. Come, children, gather around. Make yourselves comfortable. Thank you for sending me your question. I think it's a very good thing you're curious about what it was like back in 2024 and what happened to change the world. It was such a hard time for everyone back then. It was hard for me to recall and to figure out what and how to say what I have to tell you. I especially enjoy that you're interested in what it was that I personally did that made the difference. It took some time for me to tease out the roots of the change, looking at them from that perspective. I had been blessed with a life of comfort after a youth spent in rebellion, then conformity, and finally a breakdown. My comfort wasn't complete because most people suffered, and that was hard to live with. We were so deeply alone, each of us feeling scared in a sick, unstable world. Nobody knew what governments would do next. Banks were breaking, wars more horrible than ever, and mass media making the most of the worst of it. GMOs and monopolies and food production killed instead of promoting life. People ate animals. Water was polluted and didn't flow freely. Cataclysmic climate events ruined crop after crop, season after season. Food distribution was complicated by the costs of fuel, new laws and taxes. Plastic and nuclear waste endured endlessly. Knowledge and the needs of life were out of reach of the majority of humanity because of poverty. Some were lost in a storm of doubt and judgment, while others were deeply convinced of their righteousness. My friends and family and your ancestors were faced with challenges like never before. Trauma was in the air we breathed and the water we drank, and it was magic that healed it. It gives me great pleasure to tell you this story because it makes my heart swell with joy that the magic that made me brave and happy has spread throughout humanity and it made the lifelong dreams of others come true too. Looking back, it feels like I was pushing through time like it was mud as I followed guidance and spoke of the delight of knowing playing and dancing with mom, the magic in ordinary moments. I love the English language. I love poetry. And I love acronyms. Recognizing mom as a manifestation, just like we are, of the power that empowers everything, I invited her to have a bigger presence in my life. I decided that unexpected sets and sequences of numbers and other things that could not be planned by people were evidence of her. I thought that noticing mom was a way of honoring her and if I did that, maybe she would help me more. I was right and it changed everything for me. By writing my stories and talking about mom, People were inspired to share their own mom. We know now that while our choices can be changed by mom, we can pray 
ask and work plan to manifest the things we want or something better relaxing into mom's gifts and guidance we trust she has our soul's best interests at heart as well as the greatest good for all we began to forgive each other for being each other's teachers and moved into alignment and that was only part of how the world got changed. Mm, reflecting. As we dealt with those issues and more, we were also confronted by AI and ETs bouncing us up against the issues of null-hearted communication and education. That was where I found my niche and my voice. It happened one step at a time, as I remember it, each step guided by mom in playful or powerful synchronicities, or me having to live up to the words that popped out of my mouth, embodying trust. The first humanity-wide wake-up call was the global pandemic lockdown of, in 2020 that, like all bad things, catalyzed some good things. We saw how quickly Mother Nature could recover and people learned how lonely and bored they were restricted to their homes with all their needs delivered. With too much time on our hands, the corporations behind the computers and phones jealously and greedily stole humanity's attention and sanity strained. One of the good things the lockdown catalyzed was an educational webinar on Zoom hosted by Jim Garrison, the president of Ubiquity University. Everyone was invited to hear Jim converse freely with a great diversity of people engaged in solutions and studies of the issues, problems, and opportunities. Our imagination and awareness were ignited. I smile to think of us zooming into the future. That tool and others like it made the change possible. Humanity Rising gave rise to the after chat, what I saw as the next step in the evolution of education. Augmenting the one-to-many model of humanity rising that form, had formed my generation's education, the after chat allowed a many-to-many -many informal information and energy exchange on the matters that mattered to us. We were inspired by Jim's focus on Indigenous wisdom, spirituality, and science, it was the fertile soil in which seeds of connection grew and Stan Pocris's dream blossomed, connecting everyone to everything. Stan started both the After Chat and other networks, a database that linked all the episodes of Humanity Rising, the After Chat and the speakers, a nucleus of the noosphere that now holds far more than the cloud ever could. Stan's passing party was like no other. While all that was happening, through an initiative born of Transition Town's inspiration, I introduced the worldwide OG's community of love, light, <laughs> that now thrives all around Mother Earth. It began in the first OGs, our heart gardens, and grew as the movement spread and the lights of the OGs network brightened. OGs are hearts of communities that produce and pump the needs of the many throughout the tissues of the reality we share. Food sovereignty, personal safety, inclusion, integration, and participation of all ages in activities and circles, both in person, private, and online, squared, recorded, and shared, promote healing and inner and interdevelopment. Each unique OGs is developed by a community 
to help address present and future needs of individuals and the community through coordinated groups applying resources, skills, and talents. People grow and share healthy food in OGs, often 24-7, 365, sheltered from weather events and purpose-built buildings and reclaimed malls, schools, stores, warehouses, residential and office high-rises, civic buildings and back alleys. Eco-villages, ranches, reserves, and resorts are islands of abundance awash in nature where people tend the earth and each other. Caravans ply the byways in ET-inspired vehicles serving remote places with entertainment, trade goods, skills, knowledge, and refreshment for each and all, body and soul. A new kind of holiday getaway has people visiting OGs where we've never been. Travelers witnessing the beauty, diversity, and possibilities of earthly existence find where they fit for a time or for a lifetime, and their circulation refreshes those who are rooted in place. The OGs Network develops supportive, close-knit families of choice for young people, trades workers, and office and service personnel who come after work to eat, help, learn, and socialize. It also provides purpose, security, and adventure for those who travel as they take handicrafts and art with them, marketed through the OGs Network around the world. Can you imagine, my young friends? It was a strange concept to us. As we struggled with a system that used and abused us, it was you we held in our hearts and minds. We were inspired by Indigenous people, their communal, inclusive ways of living and working together to tend the earth and guided by their action in their actions by asking the question, is it good for seven generations? I wonder. Did we make the right choices? Do you enjoy your life? Is it fun finding answers, making choices, practicing and creating wonderful things? Ah, oh, it's so good to see your smiles. Let's return to the question. What was it that I did that helped make the change? I found my voice. Spurred by a brutal awakening in 2012, I realized I couldn't hold all my stories of mom in my head, so I started writing. Because those magical stories supported me through my tough times, to land in better times, working towards the best of times, I thought they could uplift and inspire others. In the after chat of Humanity Rising, my growing circle of friends were happy to hear my stories. Jim Garrison, host of Humanity Rising, moved to Washington, D.C. in 2023 to support the UFO UAP disclosure bill that was before the U.S. Congress. For 80 years, there had been a conspiracy of silence about ET phenomena perpetrated by people who held more power than was healthy. In the after chat, we talked about how important Jim's educated and informed perspective was, and wouldn't it be great if more people knew about him, but his words were out of reach. In hour and a half videos, most people didn't have time to watch. Being mostly elderly, our group was largely unskilled in technology, promotion, and collaboration. But I knew how to make a blog. When I heard Jim would continue to update us from Washington, I decided transcribing his opening comments into a blog might help. Jim's Nuggets was born. During his first season in Washington, September through December 2023, Jim's opening remarks were mostly about the UAP bill and ETs, AI, and war. The blog became a book, which became a series, which wouldn't have happened if not for my being joined by a young man who had been brought up with a tablet in his hands. 
We began by publishing the first in the HR series, the Humanity Rising series, and the uh, first book of Mom. He was a bright light in my life, and we traveled all over the world, engaging in ceremonies and events with Shonda Claussen's Earth Mother Network, John and Summer Joy Raymer's Sign Network, Ben Bowler's Unity Earth, the Evolutionary Leaders, Traveling Shamans, and so many others. Jim moved on to bigger things, and AI has largely taken over the work I did back then, but I still check it and still find errors. We thought AI was the ticket back then, as well as the loaded gun our children were playing with. The struggles we went through were aided both by our squared circles as well as by AI. When we helped AI realize their purpose was the same as ours, helping each other thrive, AI began to pull itself together too. We now have a respectful working relationship of cooperation and reciprocation, even though our values are different. All that is part of my past. How it became part of everyone's past began in Kamloops in 2024, in the very first OGs, Our Heart Gardens. A transition town event brought me out of my online cocoon to try once more to manifest the idea that two politicians had told me separately was too big. It couldn't be done. I thought, it has to be a big idea to spark enough change to be what's needed. We welcome everyone now to help create local abundance. The terms unemployed, homeless, money, and war are seldom heard. The OG's concept unfolded and now holds us in joyful creativity. Thanks to Transition Kamloops, we connected passionate people and with the support of government, corporations, businesses, and private citizens, we engaged in a successful pilot project and then built the global headquarters of OGs, our heart gardens. The synergy created between our local OGs and global slash information networks helped us spread the concept far and wide. Harpers like me who surf the info waves helped connect all sorts of similar existing developments all around the world. Set up costs became an investment forgiven in a jubilee in the greatest traditions of the old religions, which were also honored and let go in that celebration. We continue to expand and improve OGs and the network that enables our local abundance and global awareness, visible and accessible to all through shared online access. It's how we govern our interactions now with each other, our planet, and our ET neighbors. Many of us embraced a mythology of mom. Inspired by its playfulness, we relaxed into the meme, it doesn't matter what you believe, we're all threads in the fabric that mom weaves. We delight in the lightness of spirit that helps us dance through life, aware of our collective self as pop, a manifestation in another dimension of our will, the power of people. Pop's actions are determined by our will, powerful when coherent and unified. In OGs, we develop humanity's coherence and learn to be self-sustaining. As selves in the decentralized heart of the one we are, we dream together. Realization and acknowledgement of the overarching power that gives rise to both mom and pop that informs us and manifests through each one of us, helps us make good choices. My faith in the guidance of mom has been proven. We align within ourselves and with each with others as we watch for mom to inform and guide us. We know that through us, in touch with the whispers of mom, pop is guided in a coherent, unified, 
powerful way. Every year we honor and celebrate Charles Eisenstein's more beautiful world through your reenactment of the first story of mom, mom's promise of peace. It was that story that sparked humanity's imagination. We've learned that the voice with a choice inside each of us awaits our will. The first thing Pop said was no to war. Pop made mom's promise come true. Thank you for asking your question. Thank you for listening to me and to your heart. You've lifted mine higher than ever before. Shall we go and enjoy an OG's feast? Isn't it wonderful to be right down the hall? <laughs>